and let us all that we can to build a better future. Okay. So this isn't going to be a high praise because at the end of the day, the U.S. House of Representatives doesn't do jack. They say that they do, but meh, whatever. It is what it is. Now, I do want to say I am, I am going to give praise to eight progressives and one conservative Republican who actually had the courage to vote against the House Israel resolution that was ignoring the Palestinian suffering. So eight members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus on Wednesday vote against a bipartisan House resolution that expresses unconditional support for the Israeli government as it carries out massive war crimes in Gaza, Gaza atrocities that aren't once mentioned in the newly passed measure. The resolution titled House Resolution 771 passed late Wednesday in a 412 to 10 vote. The House first act under a newly elected speaker, Mike Johnson, led by Representatives uh, Michael McCall and Gregory Meeks. Uh, the resolution, and by the way, uh, McCall is Republican and Meeks is a Democrat. Uh, the resolution states that the House stands with Israel as it defends itself against the barbaric uh, war launched by Hamas and other terrorists and stands ready to assist Israel with emergency resupply and other security, diplomatic, and intelligence support. And just so you all know what article I'm referencing, this is from Common Dreams. Uh, again, uh, Jake Johnson is the one who wrote this. The Senate the wonderful, also fantastic uh, Senate unanimously approved a similar resolution last week. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. We here at Hard Lens Media actually did a segment that covered the fact that 230, that's right, well, like around maybe 290, former Bernie Sanders staffers wrote a letter and even did a video asking Bernie, asking Bernie to stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people to condemn the attacks that Israel is doing, the bombings that Israel is doing. Bernie Sanders looked at that letter, and here, I'm going to do a reenactment. I'm going to do, your, do a reenactment, just for all of you. Here's that letter that his former staffers for 2016 and 2020 sent him, right here, this little piece of paper. This little piece of paper, he looked at it. Bernie Sanders looked at it, looked at it, looked at it, and did this. That's what he did. That's what he did. See that? That's what he did. That's what he did. This is an open for debate or discussion. That's what he did. So continuing on, I deeply mourn and grieve all the civilians, Israeli, Palestinian, and American who were and continue to be killed, said Bush, one of the lead sponsors of the ceasefire resolution in the House. As more people die every hour, it is shameful that this resolution fails to acknowledge the responsibility of Congress and the entire United States government to do everything in its power to prevent further atrocities. Mind you, again, these are the same progressive lawmakers that have said that Biden is exceeding expectations and is doing a wonderful job, many of which were also celebrating when the fact that the orange boogeyman was kicked out of the White House way back in 2020. Remember that? Squad members. So the seven Congressional Progressive Caucus members who joined Bush in voting no were Representative Jamal Bowman, who's in a little bit of hot water for confusing an automatic door opener with a fire alarm. Rashida Tlaib, Ilan Omar, Andre Carson, Summer Lee, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and Delia Ramirez, and Representative Al, Al Green, who is now a CPC member, also voted no, uh, was Representative Thomas Macy, six Democrats, including the CPC chair, Congressional Progressive Caucus chair, Pramila J. Paul, heroically, courageously, spiritually voted present. <coughs> okay, that's what they did, which is fine. I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you had somebody vote no. But I'm also going to be a little suspicious here and critical at the same time. Like maybe they decided to take on the role of just being the people who would vote no. I don't know what else they're going to do going forward unless they decide to break away and say, hey, we're done with the Democratic Party. Now, I don't see the uh, squad members doing that. I don't see the nine Democrats who did that, 
was AOC or the six Democrats that voted present doing anything like that because, you know, that means they have to really challenge the Democratic establishment. And Hakeem Jeffries is going to make sure that that doesn't happen. So while they are voicing their concern and criticism, what next, AOC? What next? Because, look, folks, this is breaking right now. Well, Jennifer, this sounds like huge news. Sean, we can report um, based on senior military sources that U.S. warplanes have carried out airstrikes tonight inside Syria against Iranian proxy forces. We don't know the number of strikes. Uh, we were told earlier today that to expect that perhaps uh, F-15s and F-16s would be involved in the airstrikes, but we don't have confirmation yet how, about how many warplanes. But those strikes have been carried out. I'm told uh, it is in response to the more than dozen strikes against U.S. bases. Uh, the message is a clear message designed uh, to Iran and its proxy forces to stop carrying out these uh, drone and rocket attacks against U.S. bases. Um, but I'm told that the planes have safely left the area and that the airstrikes uh, are complete at this time. Um, they were uh, targeting multiple locations inside Syria and Iran Iranian proxy forces, Sean. <clears throat> Say it with me, folks, especially the people in the back. The war continues to expand. What? could possibly go wrong what could possibly go wrong see this is what happens liberals and democrats who cannot think critically see this is this is the problem this is the problem this is the problem when you let trump derangement syndrome get the better of you because now now to the what remains of the anti-war movement where are you at you have to be critical of Biden. This is this is getting out of hand. We're seeing this war escalate. We're seeing what further bombings, further conflict. Now there's a new House Speaker again, so that means hey, that military funding can happen again. But at the end of the day, what what what, what is the end goal here? There are people calling for a ceasefire. The whole world is seeing it. There have been people who have been extremely critical about this war in Ukraine between Ukraine and Russia and the billions of dollars it's getting. The American people are left holding the bag. What about us? What about us, the citizens, the people? No one wants World War III, last I checked, because the survivors will envy the dead. I dread to think what humanity could look like or would turn into should the nukes drop and there is at least a pocket of humans still alive. We'll never get back to this level of civilization ever again, everything being wiped out and irradiated. What could pos what could what 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 could possibly possibly go wrong? I want to pull up this video here because it's talking about Bri uh, Brianna Joy Gray and Robbie are actually giving in their commentary about how there is such huge support now uh, for Israel and funding it. But the thing is, look, look, Israel is a superpower in that region. Theoretically, theoretically, they should be able to take care of themselves. So let's pull up this video here. CNN has released new photographs showing before and after satellite images. These show the extent of the total obliteration of several Gaza neighborhoods in just weeks' time. Meanwhile, Israeli troops conducted a raid into Gaza overnight to, quote, prepare the battlefield for this expected ground invasion. That's according to the Israeli military. Now, the raid comes after the United Nations warned that it nears running out of fuel in the Gaza Strip. And this comes after nine Democrats and one Republican voted against new Speaker Mike Johnson's resolution affirming U.S. support of Israel's war against Hamas. Those representatives are Jamal Bowman, Andre Carson, Cory Bush, Al Green, Summer Lee, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, Delia Ramirez, Rashida Tlaib, and Thomas Massey. Massey explained his no vote in a Twitter post, saying he does not support sanctions against a sovereign country. 
nor does he support, quote, open-ended promise of military support that is so broad that it could be interpreted to commit us uh, to commit U.S. soldiers to the conflict. Yes, I really appreciated uh, Thomas Massey, Republican, his statement on this, um, which is more in line with, um, with you know, the non-interventionist uh, wing of the Republican Party that includes um, Senator Rand Paul, who's also calling for <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, withdrawal of, of troops, uh, U.S. troops that are in uh, Niger, that he says there's no congressional authority for them to be there, to be in a conflict with the government of Niger. And if they're attacked, that could, again, that risks getting us involved in, in warfare. We don't want our soldiers in places for no reason to come under attack. So I was glad to see this from Massey. You know, Massey says he agrees with parts of the... Of now, now, look. Here's the thing. I'm seeing in the live stream chat, people are kind of, uh, kind of, kind of razzing Robbie. Hey, look, Robbie had a Snickers bar. He had his little morning snack. So I think, I think he's thinking with his head on straight now. He's, he's all right, Robbie. You're all right, buddy. <laughs> Grape intense says, Robbie. I don't give an f, Bree. He, he didn't have his morning brunch. Okay. You got, you got, you got. If you're gonna do a show in the morning. Come on, listen, folks. The world is all gloom and doom right now. We got to have some humor in these segments, otherwise, otherwise, we're all just gonna become miserable. So, hey, Robbie, keep on eating that breakfast sandwich or that breakfast burrito, whatever that is that that keeps you soulful, mindful, and your feet on the ground. Of the statement that he wants to affirm that Israel, the Israeli people, have been victimized and are going to defend themselves, but he does not support. Um, giving them an endless pile of money and weapons to do whatever they want with in a way that's going to draw the U.S. into the conflict. Yeah, Rashid Tlaib also made a similar statement saying that I have and continue to denounce the killing of civilians, no matter their faith or ethnicity, targeting civilians is a war crime, no matter who does it. Do not confuse my vote against this one-sided resolution with a lack of empathy for all those who are grieving. I voted against this resolution because it is a deeply incomplete and biased account of what is happening in Israel and Palestine and what has been happening for decades. This resolution rightly mourns the thousands of Israeli citizens killed and wounded in the horrific attacks, but explicitly does not mourn the thousands of Palestinian civilians, including over 2,000 children alone, killed and wounded in the collective punishment of Palestine. Uh, she goes on, obviously, in Interestingly, the establishment uh, Democrats did not take kindly to these nine people who did not go along with this um, resolution. Debbie Wall Now, this resolution, these nine Democrats who are part of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, which is a little bit larger pro uh, caucus than just nine or 15. There's a couple other members in it, too. Um, you would think that many of them would be sincere. In, in theory, these politicians would be sincere in calling an end. And ask for, you know, really push and fight for a ceasefire. Hell, you think even Bernie Sanders would listen to his supporters when they asked him for a ceasefire. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. That wasn't going to happen at all. And so we see this moment, this one rare moment, where we really see 10 politicians and who voted no, six who voted <clears throat> present, um, really challenge this whole idea of, hey, wait a minute, maybe we shouldn't be going all in. For Israel, but of course the establishment is going to quickly put that jackboot on them. Maybe progressives, you shouldn't have uh, signed up with the Democratic establishment, but it's too little, too late. By the way, thanks Kyle and Jank for giving us such weak politicians. Osterman Schultz uh, said that lawmakers who plan to vote against this resolution, quote, someone who votes against this, I would think doesn't have a soul. Um, that's the language that is coming out against anybody who wants to stand against um, uh, war crimes. I, I don't know uh, how else how else to put it. I mean, the, the American people have given Israel more money than any other country on earth. The American. Whoa. All right. See, again, Ra 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 Robbie ate his breakfast burrito, so he's on point. Let's give him that. People have given Ukraine a lot of money. They give all sorts of nations lots of money. They're giving Ukraine money despite uh, way more than uh, the European people are helping with that war effort, even though it's really more of a security issue for Europe than it is for the U.S. The American people are, are not soulless. They're extremely generous. And, um, you know, <laughs> I nothing actually makes me angrier than when political figures get annoyed that the American people don't want to send even more money overseas. Like, if this is so important to you, Debbie Wasserman Schultz or whoever it is, you can write a check then. Precisely, Debbie Waltzman Schultz.
or all you politicians who want eternal war. You guys have the money. Hey, no, no, no. Seriously, they have the money. They they can bring in that dough. They can bring in that dough. You, you, you're making so much money, all you politicians, with insider trading, doing all that good jazz. I mean, theoretically, you have it within your means to write a million-dollar check. Hell, a hundred-million-dollar check. Some, some, some of you politicians bring in that money. Some of you politicians bring in that money. And mind you, okay, these politicians are very slimy and hypocritical. So if they know how to break the law, especially when it comes down to insider trading, look, you're making a huge amount of profit. If you don't want to help out the American people, fine. But don't ask us to pay for needless wars. Hey, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for, gee, Kit, we got to trust our politicians. They do the right thing. We got to trust them. Type two, no. They want war. They could do it themselves. They could fight it themselves. F those greedy bastards. Like, you can spend your personal fortune um, handing out um, uh, uh, donations to other countries' governments for their security needs. For that, like, Israel not, is not a, it's not a poor country. It can it provide for its on. own defense. Why do we have to do it? Debbie Wasserman Schultz thinks you're soulless for asking some questions about whether this is in the best interest of the country we're actually a part of. And when you look, at, and when you look at those images, I think it does really continue to raise this question of what self-defense really looks like. The images of total neighborhoods being obliterated, over 42% of all apartments, all residential housing in the entire area being gone. I mean, I'm reminded of a quote from an IDF spokesperson, Adem, uh, Admiral uh, Daniel Hagari, shortly after the uh, 7th, uh, October 7th attacks. He said the emphasis is on damage and not accuracy. And I do think that when you look at those pictures, it reflects exactly that. Um, it, it, a reminder, we were talking about a few days ago, maybe last week, people in the hospitals, medical practici practitioners, being forced to drink the IV fluid in backs because that was the only potable water that was left. And they're treating patients in these um, conditions. There was reporting at, AB at ABC that one surgeon had to amputate half of a foot of a nine-year-old boy because it had become infected. The lack of medical equipment and clean water has led to amputations, and that this had, was done with only slight sedation on the hallway floor as a mother and sister watched. I mean, that's yeah. really what people are experiencing at this time, and the question remains, why are we, as, as U.S. citizens, continuing to not only fund, but endorse on a global stage? Uh, what it, how did um, Vivek Ramaswamy put it yesterday? Um, offer a diplomatic Iron Dome that covers and protects everything that the Israeli government is doing at this time. I'm going to pause it right there <clears throat> because I want to pull up something here. Apologies for that. Because I played this on the show. Because we got to talk about the U.S. Senate now, our fantastic friends in the Senate. Here's some of these former Bernie Sanders staffers asking Bernie for a ceasefire, to endorse a ceasefire. You'll be surprised what he does. Hi, Bernie. Hey, Bernie. Hi, Senator Sanders. My name is Raya Almasor. My name is Kevin Rabinovich. My name is Young Jung Cho. Yuseba. David Shore. Rihanna Blewett. Michaela Kaplan. Anna Fertig. Lakshmi Davy Gopal. Daniela. Becca Rast. Waleed Shahid. My name is Erica Anglin, and I work for you, Bernie. My name is Shabad Singh, and I work for you, Bernie. We were inspired by your campaign and leadership in part because of your deep anti-war convictions. I am opposed to giving the president a blank check to launch a unilateral invasion and occupation of Iraq. Your fight for dignity and justice for all. And your deep commitment to the basic humanity of all Israelis and Palestinians. We are going to have to treat the Palestinian people with respect and dignity. As a fellow Jewish American, this is something that I've always admired about you and why I came to work for you. We are disappointed that you have not taken leadership in this moment calling for a ceasefire, particularly when grief is being weaponized by American politicians. Now, what do you think Bernie's going to do? Do you think he's going to listen to his staffers? Don't worry, I got a tweet from the wonderful, incredible Jimmy Dore, as well as Brianna Joy Gray. You'll find out what the Senate does and their actions to support horrific atrocities by Israel against Palestinian civilians. And all of this is funded by our government. Ceasefire now! Ceasefire now! 
we are seeing a revitalization of the anti-war and pro-peace movement across the country. People. To all those activists, yes, that's right. I'm going to call them out. Look, listen. I remember when Hard Lens Media was on the ground covering these stories, following these protests and movements. And as soon as the orange boogeyman was out of office, all of you went away. You packed up. You left. You ran away or you decided to move on. And, hey, look, I'm just saying, if you decide to sleep, just know this. Your complacency has allowed the Democrats to capitalize on the fact that you'll 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 be triggered at the orange boogeyman but when the democrats do the same thing he does you guys won't do sh shite i'm just i'm just calling you out i'm calling you out that's that's all just being honest here of all races and faiths and backgrounds coming together for a political revolution in our foreign policy you inspired a lot of these people, these activists on the streets today. You, Bernie, are the strongest voice in the U.S. Senate on progressive foreign policy. We ask you to stand up more forcefully, as you always have, against war and bombs and for peace, freedom and justice. Thank you for already speaking up about the humanitarian crisis in Gaza and the importance of releasing all hostages. But we know our government can do more. Please call for a ceasefire. And introduce a Senate companion to the ceasefire now resolution introduced by Representative Rashida Tlaib and Representative Cory Bush. Support an end to military funding for atrocities or occupation of Palestinian people. If not now, when? If not you and us, then who? We believe in you. We believe in you. Don't. Because. Shout out to the wonderful, incredible Jimmy Dore from Chicago. Holy shite. What's he saying? Holy shite to the Senate tweet from Michael Tracy just unanimously adopted a resolution condemning pro-Palestinian student protesters as in solidarity with Hamas and anti-Semitic. The resolution calls to fully and completely support Israel in its war on Gaza. Everyone from Bernie, Bernie, Bernie Sanders to Rand Paul voted for this. What? So let's talk about it. You know, let's just bring this up here, you know. So, to the best of my ability, is where I could read this. Whereas students across the country have organized protests and vigils in solidarity with Hamas. What? They're, they're not in solidarity. No. I'm saying stop the bombing. You know, just going just gonna to use Trump's own words. I want people to stop dying. People want everyone to stop dying. It's not a controversial statement here. Look, I don't care. Look, I know I got a diverse audience across the political spectrum. I think we could universally agree right off the bat, not going too in depth in politics. We just want people to stop dying. Maybe, maybe none of us want world war three. I'm willing to go that far. I think a lot of us don't want world war three to happen. Okay. Praising the actions of the, no, no one's praising the, the actions of Hamas. Whereas the director of federal Bureau of investigation has warned of increased threats in the United States by actors inspired by Hamas. Now, therefore be it resolved that the Senate Fully and completely condemns the outrageous terrorist attack by Hamas. Okay, yes. Okay, look, look, there will not be peace in our time, okay? There, there, there never will be. The actions of the apartheid government in Israel, the back and forth fighting, I think we could condemn violence as a whole. The, the people we should care about the more are, are the innocent civilians, the men, the women, the children, on the crossfire. Number two, denounces the rhetoric of anti-Israeli, pro-Hamas student groups as anti-Semitic, repugnant, and morally contemptible for sympathizing with genocidal violence against the state of Israel and risk risking physical safety of Jewish Americans in the United States. You know, Jewish voices for peace. How, 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 how are they anti-Semitic? How are they pro-terrorists? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Jewish Voices for Peace would say we're not anti-Semitic. We're not pro-Hamas. I'm I'm willing, I'm willing to bet a hundred dollars on that. But okay. Number three, acknowledges Israel the right to defend itself. Number four, emphasize that Jewish Americans have the right and safety and security in the United States and encourage the United States government to fully and completely support Israel and its right to exist and defend itself. Okay. 
So I, I get uh, so those people who wrote that little letter to Bernie. He, hey, hey, here's the letter. He ripped it up. Just want to pull up this uh, tweet here from Brianna Joy Gray. So many of these kids are Jewish. I'm getting flashbacks of all the liberals who told me I wasn't black because I supported Bernie. Solidarity to all the Jewish leftists out there and to all the students who have shown such courage as our leaders abandon us. We live in a very sick system. Our senators won't represent us. Our House representatives won't represent us. And no matter who sits in a White House, be a Democrat or Republican, know this. There will be forever war. Unless we, as citizens, say enough.